Hey everyone, it's Final Round and my name is Jordan and some WNBA lines did just come out so I have a few plays for you. There will be two games for Sunday. Uh, let's hop right into it. You'll see images that come up on the screen. Those will be from a data app called Outlier. There will be a link in the description. I'm going to give you a seven day free trial for Outlier. And this first pick is going to be Ryan Howard. Um, took her three pointers last game uh, that she played and uh, she did not do too great for us. Um, but I like her over 18 and a half points at minus 110. She's gone over in two out of three games this year. And the one game she did not go over was that bad three point shooting game. She is typically a good three point shooter. She shot one for eight in that game and she still got 15 points. So she's got close to this line. So a uh, lot of averages would say she's going to have a better day shooting from the three point line. And, uh, if, and if she can get 15 shooting one for eight from three, we just need her to knock down uh, a, a couple more, maybe one more and then a, a free throw. And she, she gets this line. She will be facing the Minnesota Lynx who will be on a back to back. And they also give up the second most points overall to teams. Uh, so she'll be well rested and this will be a good opportunity for her to, to go back over this 18 and a half points mark um, I do like her three pointers made I think the 18 and a half is going to be safer just because she almost hit this with that one for eight shooting from three if you guys could please like the video and if you haven't please subscribe to the channel if you have a little bit of extra time could you leave a comment for the algorithm you could just say anything and it helps in this next pick I'm going to try to pronounce her name uh, Nafisa Collier over nine and a half rebounds at minus 115. She's gone over in three out of four games. The one game she did not go over, she hooked. Um, she will be on a back-to-back -back, um, against Atlanta on the other side of things of Ryan Howard. Um, but Atlanta's giving up the third most rebounds overall to teams this year. Uh, so it's going to be a good matchup for her. Hopefully the back-to-back -back isn't too much uh, for these women who... Um, I mean, they play 10 minute quarters. It's early in the year. She shouldn't be too beat up, I would imagine. So uh, um, she's been rebounding really well. I uh, like her over this nine and a half rebound mark. And then this last pick, I know the data on the uh, on Outlier is not going to uh, favor it, but uh, it's Cameron Brink under seven and a half rebounds at minus 130. Um, you'll see she's barely gone over for a couple games and another one she went over by a, a few rebounds uh, so she's gone over this line in three out of four games it's just she's got the toughest matchup for rebounds and with uh women's basketball uh Cameron Brink is 6'4", and that's considered very tall. Check Dallas's lineup, and just to check the heights and why they're they're just so suffocating uh, with uh, rebounds. Um, they played someone named Billings, who's 6'4", forward, um, and then McCohen, who's a 6'7", center. And then coming off the bench, they have someone named Brown, who's also 6'7", and then another center named Sorez, who is 6'6", that comes off the bench. They just have a tough ton of size um, who who play down low and and come off the bench just she's really big women who it's going to be very difficult for Brink uh, to find rebounds and on top of that Cameron Brink um, she's obviously a rookie she's got to compete with her teammate Derricka Hamby who has been uh, rebounding out of her mind I'm not taking her rebounds because of this tough matchup I would be going with Hamby but Hamby's still averaging 13 rebounds a game her line is at 10 and a half if you want to take a look at that but she still has this really tough matchup so Brink's got to go up against all these women who are much bigger than her and uh and she's got to go up against her own teammate uh for some of these rebounds derica hamby um so i'm gonna go with the under here for minus 130 at seven and a half rebounds if you do want to play an over for Cameron Brink, her fantasy score for prize picks and underdog has been crushing it. Dallas actually do give up a decent amount of points. And Brink scored 15 points last game. She uh, had a few games where she wasn't scoring much at all. So she's getting better with scoring. But take a look at her defensive stats. If you can utilize her defensive stats um, and fantasy scores, the way to do that because you can't pick like a steals plus blocks. Her first game, she got two blocks, zero steals. Um, second game, five blocks, one steal, third game, four blocks, three steals, and then she just had a two block and a two steal game. I'm not sure how she's going to fare against this bigger lineup when it comes to blocks, but still, I think her fantasy score would be a good play. She's going to have good opportunities to score, and uh, I don't know about the rebounds um, because of this really tough matchup, but 
Um, her defense, uh, she definitely has block, blocks come with timing, uh, and sh she obviously has very good timing, and steals is also a good timing as well. So if you want to play an over, if, and if you're on one of those player prop apps, uh, go with the fantasy score for Cameron Brink uh, to utilize um, those defensive stats. So I'd like to shout out my partners, Underdog Fantasy, Sleeper, Parlay Play, and Chalkboard. Use promo code FINDAROUND11 on any of these. They'll match your first deposit. There'll be links in the description that'll take you straight straight there with the promo codes and thank you to anyone who uses those um, i also have a discord link is in the description conversation will be going on about nba WNBA, um, and, and all the picks there uh, baseball esports soccer all kinds of stuff uh, and I, it's free love to see you jump on in there and uh, a recap uh, for last WNBA slate so I'm going to get this first quarter prop out of the way uh, that did not hit. Uh, Sabrina Nescu over four points. Um, she was going over like all season long and then just hit a three-pointer and didn't even play the whole first quarter like she normally was. Uh, something was up there, but, you know, it's the first quarter curse. So full game props um, did very well. Kelsey Plum went over two and a half three-pointers made. Um, she's hit that every game this year. It's definitely something we keep an eye on. Um, Jewel Lloyd over four and a half rebounds uh, for minus 140. She hooked at four rebounds. Just just need just that one more rebound, and this would have been a sweep on full game props. Um, Natasha Cloud over six and a half assists for minus 140. She crushed this. She ended up with 11. And I did mention her uh, double double was at plus 500, which would be almost like picking a home run prop um, she finished with nine points uh, she got a technical foul point right there at the end and uh, she missed a three right there at the end of the game could have hit the plus 500 double double um, that would have been awesome for anyone who bet that um, but her assist was was definitely the play she almost had this by halftime uh, so that's Natasha Cloud and then Brianna Stewart over eight and a half rebounds at minus 128. Um, she did end up with a double double, which I had mentioned, uh, which was uh, plus 115. But so far this season, I'm going to focus on, you know, hit rates and I'm also really going to focus on the matchups here. Uh, so we'll definitely see how that uh, matchup with Cameron Brink and Dallas goes. Um, um, I know the. Uh, Usually, if you see three out of four, you want to take the over, but I, it, the toughest matchup for rebounds, um, I feel like I just got to go with that matchup and uh, and take the under there. We'll see how she plays, and I'm still just learning WNBA as I go, learning all these names, becoming more familiar, and the picks are getting better from the very first video. The very first video wasn't too great, but the picks have been getting better and better so hopefully you guys uh if you take any of these hopefully you do well um hopefully you have a a good sunday overall we know sundays can be crazy um do not have any baseball picks for you guys like i said baseball will come whenever there's there's not an nba game and i i can i can fit in WNBA and uh baseball but i've actually i've been watching some of these WNBA games and been very surprised by the crowd turnout it's been Pretty nice. So, Someone in Discord did mention uh, sports betting bringing more attention to WNBA, which is true, but sports betting is not going to put, fill the seats. Like, you're going to just place your bet. Uh, maybe you turn on the game. Maybe you don't even turn on the game. You just check a box score, see if you hit it or not. But to fill up the seats, uh, popularity is starting to build up. And uh, I know a lot of that has to do with Caitlin Clark and uh, you know a lot of hype behind uh, other rookies like uh, Brink or, or Angel Reese. Uh, so it is good to see, um, and hopefully it, it brings more data for us. Um, I did reach out to Outlier to see if we can get something like uh, defense per versus position, because right now I just have a defense versus the entire team, and um, and hopefully we can get like rebound chances and potential assist. And once we get all of that data, we're going to be able to make better choices, because uh, right now the uh, data is very limited for WNBA, whereas, you know, we have basketball, we have a good amount of data and we have baseball. Baseball is like all data, um, just every little thing. You can go back to the movie Moneyball. Um, it's just data, data, data. So it's, uh, you can make very statistical picks uh, for baseball. But right now, WNBA, it's kind of uh, just, you know, you just look at a few stats and you kind of go off of that. So I will get this edited and get it out to you all. Hope you do well. God bless you all. It's fine around. My name is Jordan. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.